Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about a feature that uh, you've probably seen a lot on the boat but um, haven't spoken about a lot and it's quite a um, game changer as far as the boat's concerned. Uh, completely changes the way we sail the boat, how the boat works and functions and all the rest of it. That's probably the single biggest uh, upgrade or change to the boat that we've made. Um, and of course we've uh, overlooked it or not spoken about it much. But it's the, um, the addition of the Langeron. Uh, and that's the big black stick that goes down the middle of the trampoline. And we're going to talk about it, what I, um, why I put it on there, and uh, what it replaced, actually. So, anyway, we'll have a look and, uh, at what I got, or how I changed it, and how it sort of works. Here it is. That is the thing in question, that big black pole it goes down the middle of the boat. And that, believe it or not, has transformed this boat and what we can do and how we use it. Uh, let's talk about why a little bit. Uh, well, let's talk about what was there. So before we had this big white walkway. Went down the middle, it had a storage box in there and um, it attached to the front beam and it stopped the front beam from uh, compressing backwards and it'll have possibly some footage of it from before, but anyway. Um, we had no bowsprit, we just had the jib and a symmetrical spinnaker that flew off each, each bow. Um, but it was this nice big walkway you could walk down and uh, you could get to the anchor in the front down this big walkway but it was a bit of a dumb thing because I had this box and you had to step over the box and so anyway I got rid of that obviously and I put this thing in uh, this big black pole which is a recycled uh, bit of America's Cup uh, mast uh, along with the, the front beams so these were bits of America's Cup yacht masts that were chopped up and sent to landfill. Uh, except our good mate Ewan didn't send them to landfill. He was going to make fence posts out of them and I convinced him that I could uh, upcycle them other than fence posts <laughs> and use them on a boat again. So he very kindly uh, let me uh, upcycle them. But anyway, so that's actually at the top of the mast. As you can see the, where the, all the halyards and backstays and everything attached, blah, 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 blah. But now it's the Langeron. Um, and what does this do and how has it upgraded our boat? Well, first of all, it's provided a bowsprit for us, which we can fly the Code Zero and the spinnakers from. Uh, and that in itself was a game changer because A, we didn't have one. Um, and the other cool thing about it is because our pole is so grunty, You'll notice there's no water stays or anything like that, whisker stays, nothing. It's just a pole that sits out there, nice, clean, simple. Um, no holes in the bows to leak into the boat, no uh, whisker stays to get caught on anchor bridles, no whisker stays to drag in the water when we're going um, anywhere. Um, yeah, so there was no reduction in performance of the boat by adding water stays or whisker stays and all the rest of the associated dramas of all of that. Um, the kids were a bit disappointed I didn't put uh, little front nets out to it, um, but that comes with other issues, particularly with the anchor and all of that. When you've got nets there, the anchors get caught in the net on one side, um, yeah, and a bunch of other stuff. If you do get big waves, 
they happen to get nearer and they catch the nets that's a lot of drag blah 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 um, so not that we've ever seen a wave come anywhere near up here but yeah but that was the first big big change to what we could do with our sail plan is the end of the pole and flying all of our downwind stuff the second big change was um, the attachment point for the forestay is now super rigid like the beam and front end of this thing is rock solid rigid like there is no flex <laughs> in this anywhere so that was a huge upgrade geometry wise and flying this jib well that's all still the same um, nothing's changed a whole lot there other than it's improved with its stiffness this thing big 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 up this is the whole reason I wanted the launcher on was this thing here for the uh, storm jib and trinket it means that I can run the small jib when it's windy massive massive upgrade um, and for me there's a massive safety aspect upgrade so the um, ability to fly this sail now uh, in conjunction with uh, the lock up up in the mast you can see actually um, that I don't have a force in a force day that's in the way it's actually put away against the mast and it's synthetic and it's all yeah you know, nicely put away so it's not actually a hindrance you can see the anchor ball thingy uh, <laughs> which sort of looks like an inner force day but it's not that's you know if you're at anchor fly your anchor ball um, yeah anyway uh, so this was a massive upgrade now with this launcher on we can have the inner force day we can have our code zero we can have our spinnakers flying off the center line um, so it's just completely changed the sail plan for the boat uh, it's also um, made our trampolines bigger because we had a big wide thing in here so we had quite narrow trampolines so our trampolines have got bigger uh, means we got rid of a little bit of weight um, yeah so that's our launcher on so this is the halyard for the um, staysail. So it goes uh, from the top of, well, where the lock is, down inside the mast. It comes out the bottom slot here, turning block. And I also have a little cleat here for parking the halyard. So that when it's put away, it's all neat and kept out of the way. And to hoist the um, staysail, just hoist like this. We're on the lock. So now the halyard is actually completely loose and slack here. To stop that flapping around inside the mast, I've got this little cleat here and I nice. park it like that. Puts it away nice and neat. And that's also how I park it when um, when the halyard is not attached to the sail and parked on the, um, the wing here. I just pull it tight and park it in the cleat. So that's the halyard and how it's set up at the bottom of the mast. Now let's go and have a look at the tack. So here's the tack end. I've got the furler and the lines are on you can see i've got a two to one currently set up uh, this is a temporary solution until i can um, get the three to one set up on it the three to one will actually have another friction ring here and this dead end instead of being at the front end will come back and up to here uh, so i get a little bit more purchase but yeah this is the the tack end and this is how we pull the luff tension um, into the the sail so we hoist it, put it on the lock while it's all slack and loose and then we put tension in down at the bottom end here. Um, so all the tension is in the bottom end of the arrangement, not at the top end. So this is the other end of the tack, this is what holds it all together. This is the clutch for the um, tack line itself. 
So at the moment we're just bouncing it, uh, pull it here tight, pull it through. Um, I still haven't fitted the friction ring that will go here. So I'll go through the friction ring here and then up to the winch on the mast and that way I can winch it down nice and tight. Um, but like every little project on the boat, it still needs a few little things to finish it off. The orange one here, this is actually the tack line for the uh, Spinnaker and Code Zero, basically the end of the pole. So two of them uh, are living here. And again, this one also get a uh, friction ring here so that we can grind down the tack of the uh, Code Zero. Um, yeah, that's how this end of the deal works. When you say grind down, you mean it will go back to the winch on the mast? Yeah, it's back to the uh, winch on the mast and we can grind it down with the winch. And the friction rings just to allow it to turn a right angle. Yeah, we can't pull up on the clutch like this. Uh, clutches, you don't pull anything other than straight out of them. Uh, if you pull up on them, they're actually split in half. Um, and they got this stainless steel ferrule in them. You try to pull up like this and in all of my experience, uh, the ferrules blow out and these split apart and everything turns to kakapoos really fast. So um, using that as the big angle deflector, not a good idea. As some of you guys uh, pointed out, you saw me um, hanging out on the end of the pole here, uh, clipping the kite onto um, this loop. That's because that's all I had uh, between Cadiz and the Canaries. And um, it's not uh, a recommended uh, maneuver. It's a, it was a risk, but it was a reduced risk because I had four very competent uh, people on board, as you would have seen also on the trampoline, um, that would have seen me go overboard for one. And two, uh, the kids are very, very competent and, uh, sailing the boat and would have been able to turn it around no dramas to come and pick me back up so um, note for you guys if you've got kids on board teach them how to sail they are good crew members and if you do hurt yourself you'll need them one day anyway that's my spiel for the day um, so in the meantime I've mitigated that risk even further by putting the spinnaker tack line code zero tack line in so I don't have to crawl out on the end of the pole anymore um, so this end was actually all set up and ready to go it was the other end with the clutch that wasn't set up so I couldn't actually clutch the tack line off so now I've fitted the tack line which is a two to one jobby um, and now I can actually be on the trampoline and we can pull the tack line out over the front um, no dramas at all much much safer and much more highly recommended uh, way to do it